Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cube Conversations. This is Dave Vellante, and we're here at Wikibon headquarters. Cube Conversations is a Cube series that we run, bringing in IT practitioners and other industry experts to have conversations about how they're applying technology to solve a business problem. And over the past several months, we've been talking to a number of EMC data storage practitioners, generally and specifically drilling in to backup. Bill Ehrman is here. He's the Senior Manager of Data Storage at CBTS. Bill, welcome to the Cube. Appreciate you coming on. Why don't you start by talking a little bit about uh, CBTS and your role there? Sure. Uh, CBTS is a uh, part of Cincinnati Bell. We uh, got our starts uh, in the, the late 1800s as the local phone company. So we've been around for uh, over 140 years and uh, in the 80s or 90s kind of figured out that uh, you know, information technology was here to stay, so we got into the into the uh, hardware resale business. Started selling servers and and storage, such as it existed, and networking. Um, from there, we built that business out into a, a very successful uh, data center business. Uh, wound up uh, in the end having uh, uh, nearly a million square feet of data center space, um, which we IPO'd and spun off as, as Cyrus One. Uh, so we're still a, a, a large owner in that organization. Um, Another area of business that, that we got into was, was really in the managed services. So our customers said, hey, you know, you're selling us stuff, you've given us a place to put it, uh, but we don't have the, the time or the bandwidth to manage it. So we got into the managed services business, everything from uh, a router stuck in a closet uh, in a remote office somewhere, all the way up to being your entire IT department from uh, architecture, build, run, design, the entire, uh, the entire process. Um, We've kind of found lately that, you know, in the last couple of years, that customers are really determining that they want to acquire their IT in, in sort of a different model. And, and instead of purchasing it and paying somebody else to manage it, they'd like to, to bring things on as a utility, do things as, uh, as a managed service. So infra, uh, infrastructure as a service has really become an important part of our business uh, here recently. Where we're doing things like backup as a service. Um, storage as a service, networking as a service, telephony as a service, really all of your IT infrastructure uh, together as a service. Uh, so, my role in all that here at CBTS is really to head up the storage architecture group. So when, uh, when customers come to us with you know, business problems, I look at all the different products and services in our portfolio at CBTS and how we can apply those, whether it's, it's a product that a customer were to buy or whether it's a service that we have to offer um, uh, from a backup service all the way to uh, you know, selling them a, a new storage array. I help, uh, my team helps to uh, architect that and solve their business problems. So you guys, you got a lot going on, right? You've got this whole cloud meme happening. You're both a consumer of information technology and a provider of information technology services. So I wonder if you could dial back uh, a few years uh, to the environment that a lot of people tell us as well. Everything was stovepipe, our network needed to be upgraded, and, and I'm presuming you went through kind of a similar transition. You mentioned storage as a service and backup as a service. I wonder if specifically you could talk about backup, but what were some of the things that were sort of challenging you, keeping you up at night, as it were, uh, if you dial back, you know, some period of time? Sure. We had um, a really, uh, I would say, a pretty successful backup as a service practice. It was really kind of the first, um, in terms of storage type things, it was really the first as a service thing that we really got into. Um, we were using uh, IBM's TSM as the backup uh, server. We had um, actually some NetApp VTLs uh, as our backup target, and, and then we had some regular uh, tape libraries that we would write long-term retention to. Um, and that worked fairly well, but of course it, it, it was we were kind of our own worst enemy there and then it was very successful. And uh, the business grew and of course the capacity grew and we ran into a situation where that VTL couldn't really be expanded anymore. It wasn't really working at its best. Uh, NetApp had actually come in and, and uh, essentially orphaned the product and said, hey, you know, we bought this company, we started selling their VTLs as our own product and now we don't see a future in that so we're getting out of that business. Uh, and, you know, really we had some pretty serious problems in terms of just trying to keep that business uh, working on a day-to-day -day basis and, and really more importantly trying to grow it and bring in new customers. Um, we couldn't upgrade those arrays. There, there was no upgrade path. It was we had to get rid of it. It wasn't going to be supported anymore. We couldn't put any more disk into it. We had to replace it and had to do something else in terms of, of backups. 
We also had another problem in that the TSM environment worked great for those customers that were in our own data center. But we had customers, and we, we tried uh, some, some beta programs with some customers that were willing to, uh, to give us a shot. We tried to, to build out a, a outside of our walls uh, service. You know, we realized that we couldn't just be a managed service provider to those people who happened to be co-located with us. We had to be able to uh, uh, provide for all of our customers, wherever they might be. So we tried several different products uh, for a, a outside the data center or outside our walls service, um, a cloud backup service. Before it was called a cloud backup service, uh, we had a product that, uh, that I think Seagate wound up purchasing, uh, and it worked okay, but it was incredibly expensive in terms of licensing costs, and incredibly complex in terms of, of building out appliances to put on site. And then we also tried uh, through another acquisition that we made of another company. They had a, a managed backup offering built on a Segra, and that worked at a small scale, didn't really scale up too well. And the other problem was that the entire infrastructure, both the, the vault that lived in our data center and the appliances that would go out on site to customers, was all kind of white box, uh, quite frankly, junk that we had to build ourselves and try to maintain ourselves. Um, and the, the, the cost point just wasn't there. If we were to go out and buy you know, brand new HP or Dell or Cisco servers uh, and try to integrate on that, the, the cost was just uh, you know, kind of outrageous and kind of put us out of that market from a cost perspective when you look at some of the other you know, purpose-built backup appliance uh, vendors that were out there. So we were kind of stuck with this thing. It was really hard to, to, to justify cost-wise to customers. Didn't work, work so well. And on top of that, it was kind of built on a fairly shaky architecture. So you had had the dead end problem going on, and you had a lot of different choices. So what did you end up doing? Well, we uh, we decided that we couldn't really take both environments and and converge it into one single solution for everybody. You know, that was obviously the first thing we wanted to do. Um, we looked at all the different products out in the marketplace. We looked at Comval. We talked to uh, Symantec. We looked at. Um, you know, uh, data domain. We looked at Avamar. We looked at uh, all, basically everything we could get our hands on. Uh, in the end, after doing some proofs of concept and after doing, uh, you know, quite a lot of investigative work and, and talking to customers, uh, that, that both our customers and EMC customers, we uh, rebuilt our in data center backup uh, uh, product. We kept TSM because we had such a huge install base and, and, and some of the licensing worked out pretty well for us. But we got rid of those NetApp PTLs and we replaced them with uh, data domain uh, uh, DD890s, uh, or excuse me, DD990s. Um, this enabled us to scale that that entire platform uh, uh, way past where, where we had been locked in before. Um, and it also really gave us a cost point that we were able to go in and go to some of our customers who were saying, hey, you know, your backup service is great, but you know, wow, it's really expensive. You're way out of line with the rest of the industry, and we're going to take this somewhere else. We were able to go back and say, hey, you know what? You were right. You know, our costs were kind of high. We were able to reduce our costs. We're getting fantastic dedupe rates, even with TSM, on uh, on the data domain uh, uh, appliances. So now we can cut, come back to you, Mr. Customer, and say, hey, we can we can drop. We're dropping our prices to you, both for what you already have and anything that you're bringing in new. Um, and not only that, but we're able to get much more consistent backups. We don't have the same problems with you know the VTLs um, failing backup jobs constantly. Um, you know we're getting really good success rates, and we've got you know the ability to to monitor those things for for growth and capacity and 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 how well they're operating uh, by using uh, DPA, uh, UMC's uh, Data Protection Advisor, uh, as a management platform. So it really becomes something that that. Honestly, we don't really have to worry about at this point other than how much capacity do we have on the data domains and when will it be time to, to refresh them. Those are really the only two metrics we need to, to, to watch. On top of that, EMC was also able to work with us to get us a, you know, a utility pricing model. Uh, and since we're part of EMC's service provider program. So that also enabled us to be able to bring that in at a um, uh, in a cost model that, you know, again, lowered our costs, which meant we could lower our costs to our customers and provide them with a much more attractive option from a, uh, from a pricing standpoint. So your pricing that you're getting from the vendor is aligned with the way in which you're actually providing it to your customers. Right, right. You know, our customers are coming in, and one of the great things about backup as a service is 
I don't have to go out as a customer and buy what I think I'm going to need three years from now, right? I just say, hey, I need uh, four terabytes of backup capacity today, so I'll buy four terabytes of backup capacity today. And if I need more tomorrow, I'll buy more tomorrow. Um, that's the whole point of a cloud model. And, and as a service provider, if I'm going out and trying to use, you know, knowing that my customers are using me like that, and I try to say, all right, I need to then buy what I need, how do I account for that and, and how do I manage that risk? Being able to use a utility program from EMC means that I don't necessarily have to manage that risk. I can basically buy what I need today and uh, then I can buy what I need tomorrow when, when I need it. So you've got uh, uh, pricing that better matches your business models. It's, it's pay, as you, pay, pay as you go, pay by the drink, so to speak. I'm, I'm looking for other specifics that you can give us in terms. You mentioned uh, consistency of of backups and the like. Can you share with us any 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 details, any metrics, whatever you're comfortable sharing, uh, proof points that you look at when you're running that business? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, while I don't have any you know firm numbers, what I can tell you is that we really just don't have to manage that business at this point, uh, other than going out and acquiring new customers. We had uh, constant backup failures previously. We had constant, um, uh, you know, essentially it was almost a 24 by seven uh, repair job, uh, you know, break fix work from the managed services engineers uh, that were responsible for the, for the previous environment. You know, it was constantly, how do we shoehorn more stuff into this orphan platform? Where we really, I think, had our, our biggest wins really came in the fact that we were able to essentially carve out a new business for ourselves uh, in terms of looking outside the walls of our data center. Mm -hmm. um, we took and, and you know, hey, again, as a service provider, I can't just go out and build some new service and hope I find customers. So I got to look and, and see, hey, who's going to be my, my anchor tenant, if you will, so I can build this out. We looked at what we were what we were doing with those two, with the Segra and the Seagate products. We said, all right, what products can we bring in to, to, to solve that problem? And that's where Avamar really uh, shined for us. So we were able to take those customers that were on those older deprecated platforms and we use those as, in aggregate as our anchor customers for our Avamar backup as a service. We call it the, the CBTS data protection services. Um, it's, we offered it three different models to our customer and, and it's, it's a offering quite frankly that we had absolutely no way to, to provide before. Um, and we built it up as, as actually a very successful business where we can go out to a customer and say, if you just want pure cloud backup, you know, no hardware on your site, no cost to you other than a monthly cents per gig backed up charge, we've got that. With using Avamar today, a grid in our, one of our data centers, we can come out, put the Avamar client on your system and back it up and you're done, right? So for some of our smaller customers, it works great. It puts us into that market where before, all we could do was say, well, you know, call Carbonite or call, you know, Mosey or call somebody who's basically not me. I can't help you. Um, it also allows us to go out into that into that market, you know, where we were trying with the Seagra, you know, to say, hey, you know what? I, you've got enough data on site that if you have a failure, how do you restore that? Are you going to restore, you know, 10 terabytes of database data over the Internet? I don't think you want to do that. You need a local copy. So rather than having to build some white box thing and, and try to support that ourselves, we can put an Avamar node on site in your location as a utility and allow you to back up locally and then replicate that back to my cloud. Um, and, and that gives you kind of the best of both worlds. You get your offsite data protection and you get your local copy. Um, and again, it's it's a model that that we had no way to support before. You know, the, the other options we were looking at were really designed for small, medium business. They lacked a lot of integration into you know, databases and, and a lot of Unix operating systems were, were challenging. Um, and the, having a local copy of your data was was basically impossible unless I wanted to put something out there that, that I had to try to, to support. And the other thing we can do is it's very easy. And again, this has a lot to do with, with EMC's deployment model and EMC service provider model, you know, for me, but I can take that, uh, that same hardware and I can say, you know what, I can give you a public cloud option and put you in a shared infrastructure and in a, in a 16 node grid that I'm sharing with other customers. Or if you've got something, you know, where you don't need to share your data or you've got enough data to justify it, 
I can put you in your own, basically a private cloud. So I can put your own grid on site. I can put your own grid in my data center and provide that to you as a service as well. And again, with, with the Seager product, with, with the Seagate product, we did not have that capability. And with TSM, we were, there was no way we were able to stretch that outside of the data center. So, you know, because we were able to do that, we had a whole bunch of customers that we converted, but just looking at net new customers, you know, we've been able to onboard dozens of very large customers and bring them into our, um, you know, basically bring them into our managed service and become their backup provider. And, you know, backup's great. What do you do in terms of restoring it? One of our other offerings that we have is, is what we call a virtual data center. And, and that allows a customer to spin up VMs. Our, uh, our Avamar grid that they're backing up to, if they're using our service, that happens to live essentially on the same local network in our data center as the virtual data center, uh, you know, because all our data centers are, are all you know connected. So we can do what are essentially local restores from your data that you've backed up to our grid. We can do those restores to our virtual data center. We can spin up a virtual machine on demand when you need it and restore your system to that virtual machine, bring it online, give you access to it. And I can take you from basically having absolutely no disaster recovery whatsoever to uh, maybe not quite all the way to a warm site, but it's certainly a lot better than a cold site uh, in terms of your recoverability. Okay, so obviously this had revenue impacts, renewal rate impacts, customer satisfaction, and competitively, it now allows you to compete with the public cloud you know, generally and, and specifically you know, AWS. How do you differentiate, for example, from the public cloud guys? You know, that, that's, I think, something that's been uh, a big challenge. Um, you do have some customers, I think, that, that are going to purchase and they're going to shop and they are going to you know, look purely at price. And, and they're not going to look anywhere past, hey, I can get storage for 2.6 cents a gigabyte from you know, Google's on, right? And you're not going to be able to compete with that. You know, as a, as a regional provider, and we're a fairly large organization, but we're not at their scale and we can't compete with that. But what Google and Amazon can't compete with us on is the fact that we have um, you know, managed services to wrap around that, SLAs to wrap around it, and, and the ability to customize that, right? So you, know, you go to, to Google's on and you get your, your 2.7 cents a gig. Well, how fast is that going to be? Is that going to be you're going to run an Oracle database on that? Are you going to run... Uh, you know, large queries on that? Is that going to be a good SharePoint candidate? H how are you going to make that work for you? Uh, what we're able to do is leverage, you know, not just the backup side to it, but even the production storage side and say, you know, we'll build for you exactly what you need and then come up with a cost model on top of that that says, you know, hey, if, if you're uh, spinning up an application and you say this is tier one application, great, here's what tier one cloud looks like and and we've all kind of shook hands and agreed that that means it's going to be you know maybe flash drives maybe uh you know maybe high speed uh sas drives or whatever that is uh and it's going to be a dedicated environment where we can guarantee your performance uh, most of your public cloud providers really just don't have that don't have that ability and they also really in a lot of cases lack a lot of the support that we can bring we've got in in our mason ohio uh, uh enoch which it's a northern cincinnati suburb we've got a 24 by 7 team of people that sit up there to to run our managed services so you know your environment has a hiccup obviously they're monitoring that you can call them they're there to to repair it to fix it to to manage it for you it's not just i, I get four terabytes of cloud storage that then I have to try to figure out how to use. All right, Bill, we have to leave it there. That's great discussion. Thank you for your candor and uh, the insights in your business. Quite a transformation. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, Bill Arman, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and this is CUBE Conversations. We'll see you next time.